Welcome back. Happy 4th of July to those that celebrate the 4th of July. If you're on the other side of that, sorry about that. But it is the 4th of July, so you may hear some explosions in the background, probably some gunfire because that's just kind of what happens out here in the woods. Hopefully it stays where it needs to stay and none of it comes this way. Uh, the last video is uploading now. You all will be able to see it tomorrow on July 5th. Uh, that's when it's scheduled to post. Yeah, that's when it's scheduled to post. Sorry, I'm being interrupted by gunfire. Um, I am going to start on the, what are we starting on? The seat rib subassembly. I've actually got some of the parts going already. I made a couple of spacers off camera. Didn't figure you needed to see me do that. Uh, this won't come out for probably at least a week and a half. By the time you watch it, it'll all be done, obviously, but I'm getting ready to go on a work trip. Uh, so this will be the documentation of the seat rib build, which should have a lot of stuff in it. Uh, I think it's gonna be more, more cleanup stuff, more edge prep and hole prep and stuff like that than anything to make it time consuming. And obviously some parts are gonna get painted, Cerakoted, whatever. So hope you enjoy it. I'm sure there's gonna be some lessons learned. The fuselage structure is getting considerable. It's not too heavy that I can't pick it up, but it's getting too awkward for me to pick it up by myself. Uh, so I can't wait until we can get it to the stage where I can get this on some sort of a rack and a rotisserie. I know we're a little ways away, but it'll make life a whole lot easier because right now I'm moving it around to get workspace. Anyhow, uh, you know how this goes. Voiceover Tim will tell you what does or does not happen. And after a week from now, when I come back to this, I'll probably forget all about everything I just said anyways, and I'll say it again. Okay, welcome to the voiceover part. Same prep work you see me do on a lot of other stuff. Uh, half the battle is finding all of the parts. Once I got all of those pulled out and identified, it's a matter of just removing vinyl and starting to mock stuff up for final drilling. Those bars you see me attaching there are support bars, I believe, go to the rear spar of the wings and they're ever so slightly tapered on one side so orientation is important here uh, you'll see all throughout this lots of referencing to the directions as well as the plans to make sure I've got orientation correct plus like everything else there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you fill rivets now but you don't fill until later or this goes on now but leave this open for later so you want to make sure you don't get into any of those gotchas with any of this stuff. So lots of back and forth. Uh, that angled bracket thing you see attached there is actually the seatbelt restraint bracket. And there are two of them in these ribs. So these are the lower ones. And one of them has the attach bracket for the rear seat passenger vent. Basically the only difference between the left and the right. Alright, so typical process. Get it all mocked up, final drill all the holes, and then we'll start assembling it into a bigger assembly. Not part of the main plans is the aileron trim servo. You see me holding the bracket for it there. It has its own separate set of plans, which are kind of tiny and not as helpful as they could be. It'd be nice if they were a full sheet. And the directions for them are also a little vague because they're mainly written for retrofitting onto a plane that's already been built. Part of those plans uh, involve marking out the exact location the bracket's got to go, so I'm mocking these ribs up where they go so I can measure from the rear of that spar bracket to the beginning of where each of these brackets go and there's already pre-cut out and pre-drilled holes in these ribs for them it's part of the I believe kit changes over the years but I figured it was safer to verify that those are indeed exactly where they need to be so it only took a few minutes to click this in place and measure them and yep that's exactly where they go you didn't get to see the rest of that because my GoPro died on me there. <laughs> and 
Anyhow, all those holes for the aileron trim are, as I mentioned, pre-punched. There's only a few holes for the bracket you actually have to drill, but uh, you can click it right in place and it's already got a spot there pre-punched on the rib. On to uh, skeleton assembly and final drilling. So just clicoing everything together, making sure it all lines up and I've got it all in the right orientation. And then once I've got all that done, I go through and final size drill all of the holes. I was admiring those outboard rear ribs there because they kick out. I'm not sure why, but I'm sure it'll all make sense later on. All right, time for the skins. And this side of the skin has a built-in uh, little rib flange there to add some stiffness to it. But you need to mark, I think it was every inch and a half, uh, and go along and flute so that it gets a bend in it. You can see it bending right there. And the idea is to have that bend match the curvature of the ribs. So I just took a rib off and used it as a guide. And if you flute something and get too much of a bend in it, you can always use some hand seamers to flatten out the flute and kind of straighten it back out again, and that'll open it back up, which is what you saw me do there. And once I was happy with that, it's time to start click going on the skins to start final drilling. And that's it for all the drilling. There's a picture of it all assembled right before I take it apart. And now it's time to do all the parts prep. Thankfully, uh, I had help for this. My daughter Madison and her boyfriend Coda came down to visit for the weekend and agreed to help me. So they got in on parts prep, which was really nice. Uh, what would have taken me probably three hours to do easily, we did in about 45 minutes with them uh, deburring holes and scuffing skin and then I was taking pieces off camera and doing edge prep on the scotch bright wheel. Made it pretty efficient, worked out really well. And then uh, the last thing was dimpling all of the ribs that needed to be dimpled. Uh, this got me in a good place to clean and prime all of the parts right before my trip and then went on my work trip and let all that primer cure while I was gone. Worked out really well. Welcome back everybody. This is actually the third intro I think I've recorded for this video. Anyhow, this is the seat floor rib section. Yeah, whatever they want to call it. Uh, I'm not going to look at it right now. Uh, I've already started it. I started it last week before my trip. Uh, I got it all of the drill up done. You'll see all of that here soon. Everything fitted. Lots of parts on this one. Uh, everything has been final drilled, primed. Uh, I just need to dimple some skins and put it all back together. Uh, but I wanted to re-record the intro because I just got back from my work trip in Denver where I got to meet up with George and his wife Amber. Thank you so much for the invite out. It was awesome getting to see your RV14 project and I really can't thank uh, Amber enough for the home cooked meal. It meant a lot to me on the road. I even got to attend the uh, George's local EAA meeting. That was a good time. Uh, really appreciate it. Makes being on the road a whole lot easier getting to see stuff like that. So thank you so much for that. Anyhow, uh, hopefully I can get this thing together in the next few days because Friday, Friday night, I drive out of here uh, and make my way to Oshkosh. Hopefully I'll get there Sunday morning. Anyhow, you know the routine. Stick around. Voiceover Tim will tell you what does or doesn't happen and we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Voiceover Tim. So... <laughs> 
yeah, I wanted to throw that in there uh, again just for the thank you for uh, for all of that while I was on my trip that was really nice and uh, this is me back from the trip and actually it went really quick I had to dimple the skins that was the only thing left that we didn't do before I left all the edge prep and everything else was done and something else I did off camera you might be able to get a glimpse of it is I broke the edges of the skin uh, where the plan said to uh, which is along that joint line in the middle and then there's a line along one of the rear ribs that it tells you to do. So I did all of that before I dimpled. It's a lot harder to break the edges once you dimple. And now it's just time to start putting this thing together. And it actually went together fairly quick. Uh, most of the substructure I was able to get with the squeezer, which was really helpful. Anything you can squeeze is always better than anything you got to use the rivet gun on. This is that center uh, spar support, whatever you want to call it, piece in there. And you'll notice some of the parts are different color. Uh, those seat belt brackets and other parts that are actually going to stick up above floor level have been Cerakoted, that same color that I'm going to use for the rest of the sidewalls and pieces of the interior. Everything else got primed though. Um, and here you see the seat belt brackets going back together. And the Cerakote seems to be holding up really well. I didn't uh, didn't mar it or mess any of it up while riveting any of these parts, so it's pretty tough, especially when it gets a chance to cure. Lots of back and forth with the plans, just making sure, again, I've got orientation right, especially since I'm about to commit to riveting these parts together. There's also a lot of callouts of rivets to leave out of parts. Um, you see those four Clecos in the very end of that thing. Those are meant to be left out until later because that's where it gets attached to the other structure. Uh, you'll see the same thing later on with the skin. Lots of callouts for rivets to leave out. Thought working around the seatbelt bracket was going to be difficult, but it really wasn't. The only thing you see me busting out the rivet gun there for is just a few of the holes on the uh, aileron servo trim bracket. Couldn't reach it with the squeezer. Anyhow, it's time to start clicking the skeleton back together so I can start getting it riveted. And you'll see me put on the outboard ribs, uh, the forward and aft outboard ribs, but the plans end up telling you that those don't get riveted in right now and they don't need to be on. So they're on, but they'll be off again here shortly. Not sure at what step I'm going to put them on, but whole lots of uh, do this now, prep this now, and you're going to come back to it later in the fuselage kit. Yeah, there you see I've already taken them back off because I realized I don't need them there. Now these rivets that connect the forward and aft inboard ribs, definitely no way for me to get my squeezer in there. Uh, it's just too tight of a space, so those have to be gotten with the uh, double offset on the rivet gun. And again, that wasn't too bad. These outboard brackets I could get. But those ones up against the ribs, yeah, still need to use the uh, the offset on the rivet gun to get them. This started turning into a real awkward piece to work on, uh, especially when it was time to get the skins on. I had to find a few creative positions to be able to rivet this thing together, especially by myself. last rivets for the skeleton assembly now it's time to put the skins back on for good only regret I have here is since these skins overlap each other 
and I'm obviously going to paint this plane later on. I think I should, probably should have scuffed that seam line so I had a good uh, adhesion for the primer and paint later on when I do paint the plane because now it'll be real hard to get right up into that edge and get that scuffed sufficiently but it is what it is I'll do my very best with it so I thought of lots of ways to rivet the skin on and finally just uh, decided that setting it on its edge here for most of it was the most beneficial so it's sitting on one of those ribs helping to hold this thing upright like that and lets me just reach across without having to constantly reach under it and reach over it uh, the center seam where the two skins overlap actually came out really nice the the edge break I put on it helped a lot so should pretty much look really good when it's on the plane and this is the belly of the plane so the only time anybody's really gonna see this is me when I'm crawling underneath it or somebody when I'm flying over at a couple hundred miles an hour and a few thousand feet so it should all be good if you've noticed in these videos lately that I'm constantly sitting in that one little spot right there that's because it is miserable hot in Houston right now and my poor air conditioner is doing everything it can to keep up but that's about the only spot I can stay in and keep from overheating if I move more than a few feet away from that spot uh, it just becomes real miserable real quick so I try to drag everything back into my little circle of air conditioning right there anyhow this wasn't uh, this wasn't too bad I'm glad I was able to get it done before Oshkosh I don't think I'm gonna do any more work out there up next is uh, bending and twisting the Laundron so I'll probably save that for after I've got a whole bunch more stuff to do to finish getting ready uh, some work stuff to do obviously and that'll be it then I'll be on the road hopefully I run into some of you there I really appreciate uh, all of the help and support for both the channel and the T-Flight 77 store. Uh, I'm working on adding more products now. Somebody asked if I could start 3D printing the uh, control boxes for uh, the Fly LED circuit boards. Uh, so I'm working on dialing that in and seeing if I can get that done. So that might get added here soon. We'll see. Anyhow, I'm going to leave you with a few parting shots. If you got any comments or questions, please leave them down below. You can also find me on uh, Instagram, TFlight77, uh, the store. You can reach out to me through the store. And that's about it. Thank you so much for stopping by and thanks for all the support and I will see you all on the next one.